waxing moon rises over the golden crescent. This is Iran's frontier with Afghanistan. And across a thousand kilometers of desert and mountain, Iranian paramilitary police wait for sunset. They're fighting an escalating drug war to close what is now the major heroin pipeline to the west. It's a war, definitely is a war. Uh, traffickers, moreover, sometimes are, are better equipped than uh, uh, the very Iranian. وگرنه اگر این استحکامات این نیروها اینا نبود معلوم نبود وضعیت مردم اروپا نسبت به مواد مخدر و اعتیاد الان چگونه بود After dusk a patrol moves out for another dangerous night on the roadblocks Iran has over 30,000 uh, men uh, on its border. Last year, 170 uh, uh, soldiers uh, were killed uh, during shootout with traffickers. I doubt that uh, any, uh, any uh, Western uh, law enforcement authority has paid such a high price to the fight uh, against drug. A staggering 80% of all the world's opium and heroin is now produced just over the border in Afghanistan. Uh, last year, Iran seized something like uh, 220 tons of opium. Uh, once more, last year, uh, six tons of heroin. The halls are massive, but account for barely one twentieth of Afghan drug production which continues to pour across the border unabated. The driver of this Mercedes arouses suspicion. He's an ethnic Kurd from the border region with Turkey, the next link in the international trafficking chain. <laughs> Expert eyes quickly locate one kilo bags of heroin concealed in the roof of the car, 12 kilos in all. It's all over for Fayik Shafi, a 37-year-old motor mechanic. His fast track to riches now transformed into a slow march to the gallows. <laughs> Confession, now his only chance of escaping the hangman's noose. <laughs> Fayyik paid 11,000 US dollars for the drugs. If he'd made it to Turkey, he'd have sold the shipment for eight times that amount. On the streets of Europe, this lot would have fetched 1.2 million dollars. Despite the haul, police are fighting a losing battle, and they know it. And Fayyik now knows he will lose his life. Absolutely, he will be executed. There's no doubt about that. He's facing execution. Sorry. There's absolutely no doubt yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Between the Sheikh Baghdad and Adam Khatun. Absolutely. The ancient Silk Road, for centuries a well-worn path of riches from the Orient to Europe. The land of death, traders once called this lunar landscape. Now, once again, it's living up to its reputation in a proxy war against Afghanistan's ruling Taliban, for whom opium and heroin are the key source of income. The Iranians have spent a billion dollars constructing a vast network of trenches, walls and fences along the entire frontier, a 21st century Iron Curtain. 
hundreds of mini forts dot the landscape, more reminiscent of the Middle Ages than a modern narco war. Everyone and seemingly everything is suspect, even the camels. معتاد به مواد مخدر کردم مسیر رو چند بار بردن آوردن و از این متد استفاده میکنن که شطورها رو به مقصدهای بعدی این مواد رو هم بکنن By day the Iranians rehearse ambush drills for this largely nocturnal confrontation These young police conscripts need all the practice they can get they're often outgunned by traffickers, equipped with the most sophisticated weapons drug money can buy, including Stinger missiles that shoot down Iranian helicopters. The Iranians lost 170 men in shootouts last year. But they also killed more than 700 traffickers in the process. این دستور مقام معظم رهبری هستش که گفته ما برای حفظ بشریت مبارزه میکنیم نه فقط مردم ایران. They're also safeguarding us. At all times, we're escorted by six heavily armed bodyguards, as kidnapping is a common trafficker tactic to extort money. More than 100 Iranians are currently held hostage in Afghanistan. Portraits of martyred police welcome us to the provincial capital, Zahidan. This is a city of ethnic Baluchis, with strong tribal links in the Pakistan and Afghan mountains beyond. For these people, smuggling is a traditional way of life. Fiercely independent, they regard the Iranian authorities as an occupying force, interfering in their business, the business of drug trafficking. A large number of Baluchis and Afghans end up here, Zahidan prison. Iran now has 85,000 drug traffickers behind bars. Entry. Rarely do they permit foreigners to inspect their jails, but today we get the VIP treatment. By Iranian standards, Zahidan jail has a five-star rating part of an official attempt to placate the locals. Many prisoners are also addicts, but there's no methadone program, just the Quran and the eternal quest for Allah's guiding hand. در یک دو نفر متفاوت باشه کسانی که اعتقاد به قرآن داشته باشن که اصلا جرم انجام نمیدن و اگر اشتباهی هم در زندگیشون پیش بیاد با استفاده از قرآن سعی میکنن که نواقضشون رو برطرف کنن It's a view contradicted by the man who runs Iran's drug control headquarters What I was wondering is General Mohammad Fala says prisons simply serve as recruitment centers for the syndicates در حال حاضر بیش از 8000 نفر از این افغانه رو به واسطه جرم و جنایاتی رو که در کشور ما مرتکب شدن در زندان داریم. حضور این آمار در زندان ها یک هماهنگی با زندانیان ایرانی ایجاد میکنه برای ایجاد شبکه های مخوف جرائم مختلف. Zahedan jail also holds other foreigners from the third world, Hello. lured into trafficking by the promise of easy money. Where are you from? I am from Tanzania. I'm from Zambia. Right. All right. Yeah. Why are you in jail? No, he have a problem. They were arrested him with the one kilo of marijuana. 
Uh, I know him. He, yes. he has been deceived to carry narcotic. Right. They had said in Pakistan, these are hashish and take them to Africa yes. and you will be paid 2,000 a month. Yes. But in fact, the content of the capsules he swallowed mm. was heroin. One kilo and 200 grams he swallowed. He was arrested in hotel. Mm -hmm. Despite the vast sums of narco dollars washing through Iran, the authorities insist there's no institutionalized corruption. Such is the discipline of the Islamic State. But in reality, traffickers couldn't operate without inside help. Our escorts are angered when one prisoner reveals that he's an army officer who'd been serving on the border. Why were you carrying opium? He could have been executed, along with most of the prison population. Death is mandatory for those caught with more than 30 grams of heroin or five kilos of opium. But in reality, execution is reserved for repeat offenders and big-time smugglers. But <laughs> We're summoned to the revolutionary courts complex. There's something the drugs police want us to see. We're led inside the compound, then deep underground to a bunker, where a judge orders the doors of a giant vault to be opened. There's surprisingly little security considering what lies inside. For this is the Aladdin's cave of narcotics, the central drug storage of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Heroin count as two tons. Two tons. Two tons of heroin. Heroin. And how many, how many tons of opium? Hundred and fifteen tons of opium. Morphine. 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 The heroin and hashish is routinely incinerated in public ceremonies. Hundreds of millions of dollars worth, literally up in smoke. If you were to put all this in trucks and take it to the streets of Western Europe, what would this fetch on the street in US dollars? <laughs> but the figures are easy. According to UN estimates, this lot would fetch more than 2.2 billion US dollars. Back at the border, there's another major problem for the Iranians. A nightly parade of human misery that makes the traffickers work infinitely easier. Thousands of Afghan refugees fleeing a nation destroyed by two decades of war and now in the grip of the worst drought in 30 years. Opium poppy production has also been hard hit. But the Iranians say trafficking continues unabated as the Taliban have already warehoused more than two years' supply. Like these people, these illegal Afghans at the border, they uh, are used by drug traffickers to carry narcotics in packs on their back. And they go on foot on the mountainous area and bring their drugs from the other side of border from Afghanistan or Pakistan into Iran. Right. <laughs> Packed into this small car 
17 emaciated members of a single family with barely the strength to move. This one roadblock alone apprehends a thousand people a week. There are now more than one and a half million Afghans in Iran. Despite fierce opposition to the Taliban, the Iranians have long displayed compassion to those who flee. But patience is now wearing thin. Refugees are blamed for the drugs, for taking Iranian jobs and triggering massive unemployment. 200,000 were paid to go home last year, but many later returned as illegals. What will happen to all the Afghans? They are sent to camps and envoys they are sent to the border and deported. And then they will come back again. It's a round circle. Now there are calls from within the Iranian leadership to forcibly deport the rest and seal the border. Iranian police say the same gangs smuggle both drugs and people and warn that if Iran shuts the door, the refugees and drugs will simply go elsewhere. بسیاری از جاها قاچاق انسان‌ها برای ایجاد شبکه قاچاق صورت می‌گیرد به عنوان کار و اشتغال می‌برند تو کشورهای دیگه اما هدف ایجاد شبکه‌های قاچاق و قاچاق مواد مخدر قاچاق سلاح و امثال اون هستش It's a scenario that also worries the United Nations Antonio Mazzatelli is a narcotics expert with the UN drug control program in Iran he warns that Afghan heroin is finding new markets in Asia, a region that until now has been dominated by Burma's Golden Triangle. As far as uh, uh, Southeast Asia uh, is concerned, for instance, there have been uh, already reports uh, about illegal immigrants uh, stop in uh, Malaysia, I think, Philippines, uh, in Australia. Uh, the same route that is used for illegal uh, immigrants can be used for drug. And as you said, uh, sometimes illegal immigrants are forced by criminal organization to uh, become a drug courier uh, in order to pay their trip. And already the traffickers are changing tactics, going around rather than through the Iranian defenses, via Central Asia to the north, or south into Pakistan and by boat through the Persian Gulf. To counter this, the Iranians want sophisticated surveillance equipment, banned under a technology embargo, as Iran is still deemed a rogue state by the West. Uh, there are a number of political problems that still make Iran as a, uh, a country uh, which stands on the borderline between uh, an ally and an, uh, an enemy. Uh, we hope uh, that the situation will improve. The Iranians are now unashamedly going the hard sell to impress the West. Good to meet you again. Zahedan Regional Commander Hussein Salahi has turned out his entire garrison to put the latest haul on display for us. A third of a ton of opium plus weapons. It's a kind of walking tour through Iranian drug politics. کلن افرادی که ما با ایشون در مقابله هستیم یا افراد عجیر شده طالبان هستن یا افرادی که هستن که وابسته به طالبان هستن The United States has been deeply impressed by this anti-narcotics offensive. There are even suggestions that Iran's efforts may finally provide a bridge from pariah status back to Western acceptance. ما حدود چهار ماه پیش خبری داشتیم که در آن سوی مرد در کشور افغان and already there are some new players in the sandpit. The French are providing sniffer dogs, the British flak jackets and information on trafficker movements. Even Australia's federal police have been involved, training Iranian drug officers at the Australian High Commission in Pakistan. But the Iranians say it's not enough. قدانی آنچنانی نکرده البته کمک های بسیار محدودی از طریق 
سازمان ملل در جهت مبارزه با مواد مخدر شده ولی اونطوری که شایسته است تاکنون نه The West's reluctance to do more can be partly explained by the revolutionary rhetoric here on the walls of police headquarters. Iran's calls for European and American help are still overshadowed by two decades of mistrust of the great Satan. And uh, Israel and America are involved in the, in the drugs. They have the same direction with Taliban. Right. There's also another explanation for this contradictory message. Iran is in the midst of a vicious power struggle between conservatives and reformists who want to loosen the grip of the ruling clerics. As we film one of the huge concrete walls now blocking a border pass, it becomes clear that the security forces are also riven by these deep political divisions. Not everyone is happy with our presence in such a sensitive area. What's the problem? Sorry. What's the problem? Hey, 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 hey. Let it go. Let it go. No. We're the guests of reformist-minded drugs police, but military intelligence officers are backing the conservatives, and they believe Western reporting of the drug problem can only undermine the Islamic State. Why, why have we been invited here if we can't oh, film? Why are, why are we here if we're not allowed to film? We're a TV crew, you have invited us here. The reformists regain control and the officer is marched off. It's just another day in the opaque world of Iranian politics. You've only got to spend a short time here on the streets of Tehran to appreciate that this is a nation awash in a sea of cheap drugs. There are more than two million addicts. That's 5% of the adult population. Five minutes on a seemingly empty street and dozens of addicts cautiously emerge from the shadows, many barely out of their teens. I'm also an addict. Yes. I smoke heroin. Yes. And uh, my life is, you know, finished. One of their leaders is Mahmoud, a former carpenter disowned by his family. He now survives by scavenging for recyclable plastic. I just all the time crying, crying to say, God, what I have done before you made me like that. I'm not living, you know. I'm. I know I'm. I'm died. But nobody believed me. Nobody support me. Nobody. What did the police do? Police, nothing. Police just, just take some money from the seller, and um, they are all um, free. At this point, local police arrive. Tipped off, we would later learn, by a dealer angry that we are interrupting business. We're taken away for questioning, then released with a warning to stay away from the area. Just, just translate, just translate. Daylight reveals a drug rehabilitation clinic on the same street. For a lucky few, these are the gates to possible salvation. But there are only three such clinics in all of Tehran, a city of 12 million people. Those who front up are mainly middle class, still supported by families who've managed to keep their addiction off the streets. The patients here are invariably young, as half Iran's population is under 21. Drug abuse uh, is produced uh, uh, by unemployment, which is a problem that is affecting the majority of the youth in Iran, as well as uh, also uh, the frustration of the youth in not getting uh, or aspiring uh, to a westernized uh, uh, culture or way of living, which they cannot uh, uh, have in, in Iran. For Agil, Today is the last chance. 
عشقی با بچه من چیستی دوبار مصرف کردیم دوبار دوبار مصرف کردیم هی علکی علکی But the guys are long gone, and his marriage is now over. Agil's estranged wife has returned today to help him through this appointment, a third and final attempt to kick what he calls his opium habit. Few here will openly admit to heroin addiction. There's a checkup and an AIDS test. HIV rates are still remarkably low given widespread needle use. The doctors say it's only a matter of time before they face that spectre. But now the biggest problem lies in convincing Iran's leaders of the scale of this social crisis. <laughs> این کار کردنش مثلا حل نمیکنه ولی خب تو همه جوابا ممکنه یه همچین موزلی باشه In the street outside the clinic lies Tehran's forgotten class oblivious to the passing world This is the real tragedy for Iran while sacrificing young lives on the border trying to stop the river of drugs to the west they are like an addict in denial ignoring the far greater crisis that lies within. Here, for all the world to see, are the forgotten victims of an ignored war. Afghan heroin coursing through their veins. They are, in their own words, already dead. <laughs> 